Morning for MMA Heat. I'm here with Norman Park, who is a finalist in the Ultimate Fighter Smashes. So first and foremost, Norman, how do you feel about making it this far in the show? Oh man, it's, um, I don't even know where to start. It's unbelievable feeling. Um, never really, whenever I won my last fight in the semi-final, it was, um, it was just like, oh, I just won another fight. But I never really thought that the actual, the actual scale of the semi was in the final. So whenever I stepped off the plane, it just, um, it just kind of started to hit home then. That's whenever it was um, at the big stage. That's the Premier League then. And you were highly regarded coming into this fight anyway, right? I mean, did you feel that you had more pressure on you because you had so much experience? Um, well, I actually never thought it was going to be picked, you know. Um, that was a funny thing, and then I got the phone call on the uh, Friday to say I was heading it on that Wednesday. So, um, there I was, um, going to the Ultimate Fighter, and uh, whenever, whenever, I, whenever I got the call, I was like, man, I'm going to make it the final, there's no doubt I'm going to make it the final, but it was tough in the house. It was, um, it was a tough experience being away from home, being away from... Uh, the people you share and your family and your friends and it was more mentally tough than anything but I got what I came for and I'm in the final so that's all that matters. Well it's funny because at the beginning of the show Dana gives you guys that speech and he says I know you guys are all going to roll your eyes and you won't believe me but it really is that hard isn't it? Yeah it was tough man it was um we never really thought about it it was going to be that tough but as soon as the weeks dragged on whenever we got into it I think it was halfway through the show and then some silly things started to happen and uh that was real tough, man. Like that's whenever the phone, the phone came on the scene. Then that was the worst mistake ever. Like, so what do you, what do you make of your teammates and and the fact that you've got three of you guys in the finals? Do you think there was something special about your team versus the Australian team? Um, I think you know a lot, a lot of the fighters from the team UK underestimated, underestimated the Australians. Like, but they had, um, and saying that, I think their welterweight was more stronger than their lightweight division because for a simple fact that. They had some bantamweight and featherweight fighters fighting in the lightweight division, which was, was never ever going to happen. Like, so, um, but but their welterweights were natural. They were at their natural weights. So, um, they had an advantage there, and um, they they were good, man. Yeah, they were good. They're a good level, like so. Respect to them, man. What do you make of Colin Fletcher? Oh, Colin, man. <laughs> See, whenever I actually met him at the, the, the airport yeah. before we, we flew out to um, the house, and uh, oh, we just clicked like brothers, man. I'm telling you, he was, he was just like a big brother to me, man, and. Um, I said to him, you know, I, I never ever want to get matched up with you in the semi-final or the first round or something like that there, but, and um, I'd rather fight in the finale. I said to him, therefore, we're, we're going to be in the final, me and you, and he says, yeah, for sure, so, it's, it would have been hard actually fighting him in the house, but now that I'm away and we kind of spent a bit of time apart from each other, and uh, I still speak to him, like, I saw him, I saw him back at the, at the hotel, and, um, oh, Colin's a nice fella, I like him, but we're, we're going to set the friendship aside just for just for them 15 minutes like because at the end of the day this is really important for both of us and um in our, in our future so yeah and then I says I'll buy my losers drink after, nice. after nice now correct me if I'm wrong you're Irish yes yeah and a uh, beautiful country I've been yeah. loved it uh can't wait to go back you said that you kind of got into fighting to to turn yourself around you weren't doing so well as a teenager is that true yeah that's true um, I was um See where I'm from. It was only a little village, and there was nothing for any young fella to do. Uh, the only thing for uh, us to do was to party and uh, get drunk and wreck, wreck the town in the village. It was crazy, like, and then we started dabbling with drugs and stuff like that. There, kind of going, been in the wrong uh, life, to be honest. And then, then a, a martial arts club just opened up um, up the road from where I live, and I got straight into it, man. That was that was the best thing I ever did. Like, that was the best thing. That, if, I, if, I, if I hadn't ever, uh, if I had never came to the um, to the town, I wouldn't be standing here talking. Right now, like, so like that. Very nice. And what do you make of the whole rivalry between the two countries, though? Because apparently some things went on behind the scenes with Ross and George, and we didn't really get to hear about it. How how bad is the rivalry? Yeah, it was. Uh, to be honest, I never actually thought it was that bad until um, <laughs> I see my dad just to watch um, uh, just to watch cricket on TV, you know. And I was like, what's this whole Ashes thing? He says it's like a rivalry between the UK and, uh, and Australia, you know. So whenever I came to the house, then. It was, oh man, I think the Australians were more against us than we were against them. Like, I'm telling you, it was, it was that bad. But for me, I just, I'm an easy, easy come go guy. I don't really mind. So, but there was a lot of things in there, especially between the coaches. Um, uh, there was at times things got really, really heated up. Like, but you think, you know, uh, you think Ross got the better of George in terms of the verbal exchanges? Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think maybe Ross has um, dealt with it more better than uh, than George did. You know, I, I don't think that's George's type of thing, you know, the smack talk and all that there. But, um, yeah, he's a bit weird, you know, uh, George. Good fighter, like, but that, that weird sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> well, he certainly stuck it to him in the demolition derby, right? Oh, yeah, and you, and you straight here. Because um, I think Ross, um, he does a lot of... Um, 
more, motocross and stuff like that there, so we kind of got the gist of driving and stuff. And once we, once once he heard it was um, construction derby, so that's it, man. He was getting the 10 G's for sure. Great, great. Well, congratulations, like I said, to making it so far, and best of luck to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.